Hey everybody, Black and Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I wanted to do something fun and special. As you guys know, I am a very big gaming guy. I do a lot of fun stuff, but I do a lot of gaming stuff as well. That's like my main thing. And with games, I love collecting. I, I enjoy collecting games, I enjoy collecting consoles, I enjoy collecting video game themed stuff. Like, just in general, I am a big collector guy. And I don't necessarily have to be new, new, new all the time. I'm actually a big fanatic of just game stuff, even if it's old. So what I wanted to do in today's video is actually do something fun and something that I think you guys will get a big kick out of. I wanted to show you my gaming collection. Not just my games in general as a whole, like saying, oh, I have this game, yada, yada, yada. Like, I want to show you the full thing. I'm going to be showing you guys my handhelds, my consoles, even my cool little knickknacks that I have for gaming. For me personally, gaming is a huge part of my life, and I just am really, really happy to be able to say that I have the ability to be able to do this stuff now. My inner child in me is so happy to be able to share this stuff with you guys and make a video about this because... When I was little, I, I always dreamed of being able to collect video games and be able to play video games and be able to do stuff with video games. And the fact that now I'm finally doing it, and even I have a channel where like I have just people like you guys just supporting me for doing this. You know, not telling me to get a real job or something like that. You know, someone that's like just like, hey, John, that thing you love, wh why don't we talk about it more? It's just like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I would love to do that. So I'm very excited to make this video and just show you guys my gaming collection. Feel free in the comment section down below. If anything in this video ends up popping out to you, let me know if you want to uh, hear more about it, or even if you guys want to see a video on that particular thing. But yes, guys, let's end up beginning with this video. So I will be showing you guys my handhelds, my consoles, my games. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now, when you look at this thing, you're going to see a lot of similarities to the Nintendo DS. I mean, look, clamshell design, uh, you know, backlight, rechargeable battery pack. But funnily enough, this was the very beginning of this. This isn't one just something that you found standardly. Like, this is actually the beginning of that. Like, the Nintendo Game Boy set these standards. So in the original Game Boy, it was just a simple green screen, you know, no backlight, no rechargeable battery pack. It took AA batteries, and you had to just be able to play with what you had at the time. Whereas the Game Boy Advanced SP, clamshell design, rechargeable batteries backlight so you can be able to see wherever you need to be and this particular model in fact all the game boys always end up becoming backwards compatible with all the other generations of games so this was one of the last ones and this one was able to play game boy game boy color and advanced games all in the same handheld which was just sick to me so here's an example of like the game boy games by the way because i don't actually have all the game boy models i just have like one of each game's cartridge but yes, yeah, so here is all the variants. So I have Game Boy on the original on my left, then I have in the middle Game Boy Color, and then on my right I have Game Boy Advance. So these are the different cartridges. So with the Game Boy cartridge, uh, this was the cartridge, this is Pokemon Yellow, and this is pretty simple. It's a lot bigger than the standard Nintendo Switch cartridge, for example, uh, and it's actually even decent sized enough to be uh, almost like a modern cartridge. But, uh, yeah, this was a Game Boy cartridge. It was a, just a nice big hunk of plastic that you could play full-on games. Now, this was actually my very first old-school game, by the way. This was my first old piece of tech, and this was my old first game. Like, I actually got these together at a uh, store that I get all my old games from a lot of the time. Like, I get them all from the same place, and the guys love me, and they, like, hook me up with a lot of discounts. It's super fun. I enjoy going there. It's, like, my happy place. But this particular Game Boy and then this game with Pokemon Yellow, the first Pokemon game or one of them, this was my first set of old school stuff because for the longest time I always got new, 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 new. And this was one of my times actually going back. And I was like, I like these. I like these old games. Let me give them a shot. So I actually, I mean, finally I got it done. I got this actually like two years ago. And I've been procrastinating playing this game because it's so old that like it's just super grindy. Like old games didn't have it where... You know, you have, like, tutorials now on YouTube, and you have, like, you know, easy prompts on the screen, or you have cheap methods. Like, a lot of these games, because they were so short, they deliberately made them harder and very grind-heavy. Especially some of the, especially some of the older ones. Like, for example, like, the old Game Boy games, like, these were just little handheld games. So, they made them really difficult. Like, an old hardcore RPG game, like Pokemon... This took me two years because I was procrastinating so hard because it was so 
painfully slow sometimes. Like, I wanted to pro just progress, but they wanted me to, like, rank up, you know, playing a Pokemon battle, like, randomly walking through the grass over and over and over again. And it got so boring that, I mean, I just had to just complete it. So, luckily, I found motivation to finally get it done. I'm not, not going to say I regret playing this. Because this was actually one of my favorite games ever. It just got really slow at points. Like, it was the worst when it was slow, but the best when it was fast. So I enjoy this, and I really do enjoy it. And I want to actually say that I might go back one day, but who knows. Uh, then we got the Game Boy Color cartridge. And this one's kind of cool, because it's actually see-through plastic. This was the way that you could tell back in the day. So this is Donkey Kong Country, and the plastic is literally just see-through. That's the whole gimmick of the color. Now, the way that it works is that the original Game Boy... You know, it just had a green screen, but the Game Boy Color, as you know, would have color. Even though there was still no backlight, you could actually be able to see the images and the sprites at a decent look. And it's just funny to think that color in video games was just actually not normal at a point. And I just love how that things have changed like that. Now we get on to the Advanced, and the Advanced has the smallest cartridge of all. This is where you're starting to get some more DS. I mean, here's an example, just like the example side-by-side -side color to Advanced. But with the Advanced, this looks a lot more like a standard DS cartridge, for example. And these ones actually will fit in the Game Boy Advance and blend in. Whereas with the old ones, because they're backwards compatible, if I put them in the bottom, they actually stick out a lot. And so that, that can like mess up like your hands. But the Game Boy, it's just so, so cool to me, man. I love the Game Boy, and I actually hope to collect a library for this thing one day. It's just such a cool piece of tech. Now we go on to what happened right after the Game Boy. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is one of my favorite prize possessions, and this is going to end up being my original, my original, original Nintendo DS, and this is so cool to me. I've kept this thing for so long, and I just can't bear to part with it, so I have the original blue Nintendo DS Lite, and look how nice this thing looks, man. It's so clean, it's so nice. This is one of the most best-selling consoles, by the way, in just history. Other than, like, something like the physical, like, PS2, where it's a home console. In terms of handheld, the original DS was, I think, the best-selling handheld ever. Like, this thing is amazing. The game library on here is so nuts. In fact, one of the things that's cool about the original Nintendo DS and the lights is that underneath of it, it actually has a slot that you can actually open up. And you can actually shove Game Boy Advance games in here which was the original uh, backwards compatibility thing. Now, the thing is with the Advance, right, it actually played Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, whereas with the Game Boy Advance uh, you know, games, those are the only things that work on the original Nintendo DS. You can't play Game Boy Color or Game Boy Original on the DS, unfortunately. But you can play Advance games, because the Advance, uh, I think, came out in 2001, and the DS came out in 2004, so the technology was similar. And plus, also, I just don't think that anyone would want to play a Game Boy Original or Game Boy Color game at that point when the DS was around. So, I obviously understand getting rid of the older games, but we had such cool memories on this game, guys. It was like, you know, dual screen, you had t a touch screen for the very first time, even for 2004, you had the stylus, you could just go beep, boop, boop. You know, you had, you know, more buttons for a change. This thing was just such a cool piece of tech, and you had so many great games. Like, I have all my games here. Like, you have Wipeout, New Super Mario Bros., Phineas and Ferb, uh, SmackDown vs. Raw for WWE, Draw to Life the Next Chapter, Batman, or Lego Batman. And I have so many other games in here as well, but if I went on every single game, this video would be like an hour long or an hour long plus. But, I mean, I can't do that if you guys want me to, like, show off every single individual game. But, yeah, guys, I love my Nintendo DS. It's one of my most cherished possessions, like, seriously. All right, now we go on to one of my other favorites, and this is actually going to be right after the DS, the Nintendo 2DS. So, the Nintendo 2DS is actually one of the newer versions of the DS. This is one of the more familiar ones for a lot of you guys, probably. Now, here's the thing, right, is that when Nintendo or, and their handhelds, they're very similar to the way console revisions work. So, obviously, with consoles, we have, like, Xbox, three, Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and the PS1 through 5. But with the DSs, uh, just like with, you know, console revisions, the Nintendo 2DS is a full-on-fledged console compared to the original DS, but it's actually not considered a new console compared to, like, the 3DS. 
the 2DS is like to the 3DS as like the uh, the Xbox 360 is to the Xbox 360S or the Xbox 360E, which is revisions. Or in other words, a more modern example would be like the Xbox Original uh, versus the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X. You know, the Xbox One, that's just the Xbox One, but the S was slimmer and faster, and the Xbox One X had, like, 4K and all that stuff. But that's not a full-fledged console, that's just, a, like, a better version of the One. So, same thing, like, with this. This is basically, like, a 3DS, but it doesn't have the 3D. And funnily enough, this one got rid of the clamshell design. This is the very first DS to actually have a non-clamshell design. It actually is similar to a Game Boy in that regard. Yeah, but this doesn't flip, this is just the way it is, but... The fact that it has so many different things, you got a camera in here, it's got internet connection, it's got a circle pad, it's got uh, you know, a power button versus like a switch, although I believe the original DS had that, but it lasted longer. You were able to go to the home without turning the console off. Uh, you actually had much better games. If you wanted the 3DS, you had 3D. And you can even do things on this, like run Netflix and YouTube. Like I'll actually turn it on and actually be able to show you guys, but this thing is actually so crazy. That runs things like Netflix and YouTube. Now, I don't actually have it on my... Oh, no, I do have it on my console. But, yeah, if you just take a look for just a split second, you can see there's Netflix and there's also YouTube even as an option down here. I'll see if I can find the button. But then you also have got YouTube. Like, you can be able to run these on the DS. Now, I have never actually used these before, but legitimately, though, I might try these one day for a video. Be like, hey, guys, watching Netflix on the Nintendo 2DS. I mean, <laughs> let me know if you guys actually want to see that as a video. Not going to lie, that doesn't actually sound like that bad of an idea. I've been wanting to do that for like the longest time, but like never got around to it. So, yeah, that's my 2DS. So that's pretty much my handhelds. I mean, I have a whole bunch of controllers and headsets in there, but honestly, it's just not worth going through the hassle of just showing every single individual one. So I think what I'll do is I'll just gonna be moving on to more of the like fun stuff, such as the consoles. So now let's go over to the consoles. Alrighty, so this is actually one of the oldest things that you could possibly see for gaming nowadays that a lot of people would understand, but this is. The original Nintendo console. Not a Nintendo console that you expect to see. This is Nintendo's very first console from 1985. And it was called the Nintendo Entertainment System. And this was a console that I finally just got back today. One of the last few to complete my collection. I mean, I'm just still going to collect games, but this is completing my main collection of like the main stuff I want to have. Because here's the thing is that... With the Nintendo line, is that Nintendo does have, like, handhelds, and Nintendo also does have some other consoles. But I wanted to try to get as close as I could to getting all the original of the main three uh, uh, console guys, which is PlayStations, Xboxes, and the Nintendo stuff. And I'm going to skip out on one Nintendo console for now, and uh, some of their handhelds because of the backwards compatibility thing is just not worth it. But... For the most part, though, I mean, I've got, like, a majority of what I want, and now everything else in here is just bonus. But the, the original Nintendo, right? This is something from 1985, the thing that started it all to get us to the Nintendo Switch. And it's just, like, so cool, man. You had the power button, you had the reset button when you wanted to actually switch games, or if you need to restart it for whatever reason. Instead of going back to home, you just hit reset. It's such a cool thing. And then you had the little lid over here. This is something that my dad used, dude. And you had controller ports because you couldn't have wireless. You just have the controller spots right here. Although, I don't know what this is on the bottom. I honestly could not tell you what this is. I don't know what this lid's for. But uh, maybe I might find out one day. <laughs> and it's so old school that instead of having HDMI, the little ports on the back are for Channel 3 and Channel 4. I mean, that's just such a funny thing to me, man. This is such a cool piece of tech. Now, fun fact, by the way. I said I got this back recently. Originally, I got this about a couple months ago from a game store that I've got all my old school stuff from. There's like a whole bunch of likable guys in this one old school gaming shop that I go to. And I actually bought a Nintendo from them, this Nintendo in particular. And when I got it, unfortunately, it was the one console I got from them that was busted. The pins on the inside basically like rotted. And the thing is with the pins, luckily they're able to be fixed. So I got a refund back from the guys. I got it originally for like 70 bucks and they were like, hey, uh, you know, if you want to, we can refund it and uh, we'll even fix it for you for free. So I was like, okay, cool, hot shit. So basically what happened was that I gave them back the console and they gave me back my cash. Now it was like several months later down the line. I think we all forgot at one point. I was like, hey guys, like what happened to that Nintendo that I, I refunded? You said you were going to fix it. And they were like, oh yeah. And like we all got sidetracked and their one repair guy like kind of like fell through and the one other employee got stuck with the duty and then finally he called uh called me recently 
and uh, I didn't get the voicemail until like actually like later on and I actually just ran into him randomly at the store and we kind of like just talked about verbally. He's like, hey dude, the Nintendo's ready. I'm like, wait, what? Because I never, I never checked my voicemail yet. And he's like, yeah, it's ready and he showed me it working. And it's just so cool to be able to have this now uh, back after all this time. Now, the cool thing it was that at the end of the day, because I waited so long, they actually just gave it to me for free. Like they legitimately let me have the whole Nintendo for free. And that's just sick to me, man, because I originally got this from them for 70 bucks. That's not cheap. I mean, like, obviously a lot of people wouldn't pay that price for something so old school, especially because a lot of people like modern stuff now. But here's the thing is I don't necessarily care about that. As long as it's not, you know, dirt cheap and, like, I'm a little bit worried about getting scanned for it being broken, but also it's not expensive either to the point where it's like a full-on fledged console. Because I can tell you this is that some people think of these as rare rare to the point where they oversell these things 70 bucks for something like this is not honestly that bad to me you know it could be like hey you know I, I can pay 70 bucks for this and i can get the whole original library because like i don't care how old the games are i like having just the whole library of games but i'm not going to pay 500 dollars for this thing when i can get a playstation 5 for example some people do that some people charge full-on new console prices for the old stuff and it's just like no i'm not going to do that I i'll get better better for cheaper so yeah, like I have the whole Nintendo library that I can I can shove into this thing now. And I was looking forward to collecting for this thing. And like we even have things like the old controller. Like you guys think that some of the newer controllers are complex. Look at this old piece of tech. This is the original Nintendo controller. This is the precedent for what game controllers should be. You add the A and B buttons, you start and select, and then the D-pad. And it's just so cool. This is one of the most iconic controllers that you will ever see. In fact, if you guys ever want to get Nintendo games but you don't want to buy this. Uh, you can just use Nintendo Switch's online service, which I actually think is like the best thing that you could possibly do. So I love the Nintendo, and I honestly think this is one of the best consoles that you can get if you're an OG. If you really genuinely want to end up getting like into game collecting, you actually want to be able to end up playing some of the old classics, look into a Game Boy or look into a Nintendo. It's honestly worth it. Alright, so here is another one of my consoles that I think is going to be really, really cool for you guys. So this behemoth right back here is going to be another beginning times console. And this is the original Xbox. This thing is a fat boy. Like, the original Xbox is thick. Like, like th this thing is thick. Like, I could probably try to shatter this over my knee and I would probably break my knee. Like, this thing is freaking huge. And, and like, this is like the length and then this is the other length. Like, look how thick this thing is. And you're not gonna break this anytime soon. And, like, it's just so cool, like, to see how crazy of a juggernaut that Microsoft was at the very beginning. Because Microsoft is one of the longest console companies that are still around, but they were one of the later ones to join. They, they actually had their first console in 2001, and so they were able to, like, add all the stuff that, like, Sony and Nintendo did over the last several years. But you have, you know, four controller ports, one, two, three, and four. You had the power buttons, you had the little disk drive. But overall, this thing, even though it was very big and hefty, this thing was pretty good for what it was, all it was worth. Like, you actually had a lot of cool games that you could have on here. And they ran pretty decently for, since the fact that it was from 2001. I mean, like, just a few years later, we got the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 came out in 05, and this came out four years earlier. I mean, other than the hardware differences and some of the, the graphics, like, this is overall a pretty solid console. I really like the original Xbox. In fact, I always used to play this at my cousin's house for the longest time. And I finally got my own. And then we got over to the controller. Now, here's the, th the thing with the Xbox controller, right? Is that the original Xbox controller, it's very funky. And this is not even the worst design. The original uh, controller called the Duke. Like, if you ever look up that one, you'll, you'll see what I mean on how bad controller designs can be. But this one's a slightly better one. So this is going to be a Xbox controller, the original controller, but not the original original. But look how different this one looks compared to, like, let's say, the Xbox One, for example. This is actually a memory card. It's funnily enough going into the controller, but this is the actual controller. So we got the giant freaking Xbox logo. We've got the D-pad, normal A, B, uh, X, and Y. And then we actually have got slight differences with, like, start and select. These are the start and select buttons. Wait, no, these are actually the start and select buttons. This is back and this is start, so... Is this the bumpers, then? You're finding out something new every day. Yeah, there's no bumpers on this controller. These are the bumpers. Yo, like, so you would be holding this if you want to, like, throw, like, a flashbang? You would hit this. That's weird. I didn't even know that till now. But, yeah, there's no bumpers on the original Xbox controller. It just triggers. And they're down here. That's, that's some funky design, man. And yeah, the and memory cards, like, 
you know, we didn't have it saved to the hard drive until the original Xbox. Uh, the original Xbox was actually the very first console to have the the, uh, the console itself save your data, but they still had memory cards, and they actually went inside the controller here, which I thought was kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, PS1 and 2, the uh, original Nintendo console, the Super Nintendo, the N64, and the GameCube either uh, saved to the disc, or sorry, saved to the cartridge or a memory card. And then the Wii was the first one to save internally. But the original Xbox, all the way through to the uh, Xboxes we have now, they saved on the console because they joined late. So that's pretty cool. But you still have memory cards. I mean, like, it's just kind of an interesting trinket of history. Overall, the fact that the Xbox just... The way it is, it's just so nuts, man. Now, I think with the Duke controller, if you guys don't want to look up a Google image, what I can do is I can tell you this, is that one of the reasons why it's such an uncomfortable and awkward controller is that the A, X, B, and Y button aren't laid out the traditional way. They're actually laid out like diagonally and the buttons are thinner. So the buttons, instead of being a circle, they're kind of like a slither of like a fingernail and they're diagonally. Like A would be here, B would be here, like a little bit above it, and then so on, so on. So they'd be slightly off and it would just be the weirdest and funkiest thing. Look up the Duke controller for the original Xbox one day and you'll be weirded out on how bizarre Microsoft laid out their initial first controller and I, I will tell you this is that a controller definitely makes or breaks a console for me Luckily, they did have revisions though Obviously if they, they had a revision that will make it a lot easier because you can switch these out But bad controllers are horrible for consoles because you use them all the time All right, so here is another console that started its generation and this is going to be the original PlayStation This thing is super cool. So let's talk about the original PlayStation now so with the original PlayStation, this is it right here. Now this is actually not necessarily as hefty as like the original Nintendo or even the Xbox. The Xbox was especially thick. But yeah, here's just the normal PlayStation. I mean, th this thing is super sweet, man. I mean, you had memory cards. They go actually right here into the console. They actually go right where the uh, controller ports are. Now the original PlayStation only actually had two controller ports. In fact, I think that even the PS2 originally only had two controller ports. I think it was just the original Xbox and the Nintendo 64 and GameCube that had four controller ports. I think that the PS3, since they didn't have controller port need anymore, and they just went straight to wireless, I think that the PlayStation never had four controller ports, which I think is actually kind of interesting. I just realized that now. But yeah, you've also got the power button here, reset, and then you hit the little open button, and this is where the discs would go. It almost looks kind of like a DVD player, because it actually was. The uh, the appeal was Sony compared to Nintendo, because the way that worked is that Nintendo was out, then Sony, then Microsoft. The appeal with Sony is that all the PlayStations were DVD players, even the original one. So if you had a PlayStation, you also had a DVD player. So you didn't necessarily need to get this specifically for games. It's just that, like, you know, you, hey, you got music discs, you got movie discs, you want to play those? You just get a PlayStation. And so that was the appeal as a multi-purpose tool. And you had some really great games on here. Like, like the original PlayStation library was nuts. Now we get into the controller. Now with the original PlayStation controller, I have another version here of the controller that's not the original. I have the only the original of like some of the Nintendo stuff because they never had substitute controllers really. Nintendo was kind of picky about that. But Xbox and Sony were on the, on the other side, uh, slightly different. But here is the original PS1 controller. Now, you actually might recognize this because it's similar to the PS2 and 3 because it is. But the thing is, though, is that this wasn't the way that it always was. Take a look on Google and look up original PlayStation 1 controller. And the original PlayStation 1 controller never had thumbsticks. This was just a revision one where they actually did give you thumbsticks. But imagine that the thumbsticks were gone. Like, imagine if this didn't have thumbsticks, and then this is kind of what the original controller would look like, and you would just have to use the D-pad. Originally, the PlayStation was just the D-pad, just like a Nintendo console would be. But uh, unlike Microsoft, they did have bumpers. You had bumpers, you had uh, triggers back here. Uh, you actually would not have analog on some of these. You would just have just the D-pad. But luckily, mine does have analog. Uh, but the games don't really cover it. Honestly, if you have a game that was so old that it was just D-pad at the time, you might just want to use the D-pad. But yeah, normal square, triangle, circle, and X, and start and select and all that stuff. And it's just so cool to be able to see how this has changed, man. Like, PlayStation and Xbox, especially. 
even Nintendo have changed so much every single console design. Like, Sony's always stuck with the PlayStation brand, Microsoft's always stuck with the Xbox brand, but Nintendo tries everything. Nintendo's like the Nintendo system, uh, the N64, the GameCube, the Wii, the Switch, like, they try everything. I think Nintendo's only had a sequel to two of their consoles. The original Nintendo became the Super Nintendo, and then the Wii became the Wii U. And then everything else was just, uh, you know, new versions. They try new consoles every time, which I think is kind of cool. Alrighty, so what I'm about to show you guys is a part of gaming history. This is actually the best-selling video game console ever, fun fact, by the way. And this is the PS2. The PS2 is the best-selling video game console of all time. And it's just so interesting to, to be able to have this. In fact, this is actually a launch edition. I actually had... Uh, gone to a store, you know, the same store that I got all my old school stuff from, and other than the manual and the plastic, I actually got the original one in a box. You know, like, I, I got it in the original PlayStation 2 box. It's in my closet over here. It's just a blue box that just says PlayStation. It's just so cool to me, man. And once again, this also did take memory cards. You actually just shove them right in here where the controller goes, like this. And you, I believe, had two controller slots, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this only had two. It didn't have four. But, it once again did play DVDs and it did play movies. You had the power button. This one in particular actually did have a disk drive. Well, with PlayStation, they never have disk drives except for the PS2. The original fat PS2 had a disk drive like an Xbox. So you would end up hitting the button that you would want, and then the disk drive would pop out, you put the disk in, and you would close it. But the slim PS2 actually would pull up the lid here and you would do it like the PS1 did. And same thing with the PS3 and 4 and 5. They never had a disc drive either. You just slide the disc in just, just the way it was. But uh, yeah, this was so cool, man. And I, I love how different this is. Now, you didn't actually just turn this on directly right away with the power button actually back here. You actually had to switch it on and off like a computer here first. Otherwise, it just wouldn't work. I just found that kind of interesting. But yeah, the PlayStation 2 is so cool, man. And like th like my cousins, my, uh, my cousin on my dad's side had an Xbox, like the original Xbox, and then my cousin on my mom's side had the PlayStation stuff, and she had like a PS2. And here's the Sony's uh, controller scheme again. Like, if we take a look at the PlayStation 2 controller now, you'll notice that's very similar to, once again, a PS1 and a PS3 controller. So here it is, this is going to be the PS2 controller. Now the PS2, by default from launch, did come with analog sticks here, you got, you got the controller nipples. And, uh, yeah, this one had dual shock, which means it had, I believe, motion sensing in the controller, like a gyroscope. And then also did have some other uh, cool things as well. I don't know if this had rumble. I think the PS3 had rumble for sure, but I don't know about the PS2. I don't know if it had rumble. But overall, this controller is a lot smoother, and I feel like it's not as plasticky. Uh, the PS1 controller, it wasn't that bad, but the PS2 controller, it's nice. It's a lot better plastic, but, uh... We do have a little bit of complications when we get onto the PS3, I'll tell you that much. And you guys wonder sometimes why I'm wearing a hat. This is the reason why. <laughs> Screw it, it's not, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than nothing. All right, we're gonna keep this hairstyle. We're gonna go with the crazy hobo look. All right, but then for the next console, before we get onto the PS3, this is another Nintendo console, and this is the Super Nintendo, or the SNES. So this is Nintendo's second console, it's right after the original Nintendo, the Fat Boy over there. And this thing is a lot better. So with this one, it was a purple and gray color scheme, and you had a power switch right here. You had the reset switch. This is where your games would go. Instead of having the lid, you just pop them out of the top and they would just stick up here. And then you had the eject button right here, instead of having to like just kind of like just pull the thing out raw. Uh, it had two controller ports. But uh, you had so many classic games on here. It was so nice. You, this was actually the beginning of things like the Mortal Kombat era, for example. And funnily enough, I actually do have an MK2 cartridge. It's actually over here in my dresser, which I can show you later, by the way. But yeah, the Super Nintendo is so cool. And then we go over to what I personally think is one of my favorite game controllers of all time. This is the Super Nintendo controller. And the Super Nintendo controller is almost a perfect controller, in my opinion. I feel like that my favorite controllers are probably the Xbox 360 and this, just because of how well this is done. But this is the Super Nintendo controller. It's uh, got bumpers this time, and it has the normal D-pad and everything, start and select, but it actually has double face buttons now. So we now instead of just A and B, we've also got X and Y. So this is what you would do if you had like a fighting game, for example, you would end up having like, you know, your moving button, then this would be like your grabbing buttons, and then these would be your attack buttons, and this is how you play like MK. 
So this is just an old school uh, Nintendo uh, controller. And it's kind of like, like a dog bone design. It's actually round, so it doesn't jag into your hands as badly. And a lot of people ne doesn't necessarily have a problem with this controller. In my humble opinion, I feel like this is one of Nintendo's best controllers because of just how simplistic it was. Although, funnily enough, uh, right after the uh, Super Nintendo, with the next Nintendo console, just like how the next PlayStation is going to be coming up, there was a little bit of a problem with the way that the console was. <laughs> that my camera's not focusing, but uh, now we go on to the PlayStation 3. So, here is the PS3. Now, I actually have the slim version of this console, by the way, but the original PS3, for some reason, every single one of the first versions of a console is always fat. But this is the PS3 Slim, and it's a lot better. So with the PS3 Slim, you have the little disc drive right here, and you just shove in the disc here. But the power button was actually underneath the disc sometimes. Uh, that was kind of a weird design. Uh, you've got HDMI now instead of the controller port, so no more red, white, and yellow uh, coax cables. You just got normal HDMI finally, because this was about like 2007, I believe, when this came out. Either that or 2006, I think, for the PlayStation 3. I think it was 2006. But yeah, we have HDMI, and you can use your controller via HDMI and plug it in directly, but a lot of people just used it wirelessly. And, you know, we actually had some decent games on here. You've got uh, some really hot uh, games on here. I mean, the Xbox 360 and the PS3, uh, some people still use these things to this day. Some people never got a Xbox One or a PS4 and not the new ones either. Like, people just stayed on these because... You know, these things have the ability to play a lot of games. They, there's no real bad games on these consoles, and they're really replayable for a long time. You even have some of the Xbox One and PS4 uh, ports on here as well. So these games uh, on here were default good, and you even have some ports that were decent for a while. So there's a big library on here, and you have Netflix and YouTube and apps on these now. Like, because the PS1 and 2 and the original Xbox never had streaming service apps, so you can just keep these just for streaming boxes, kind of like the Wii was at a time. And overall, these things are pretty good. The one thing, though, that I... In fact, there's a couple things that I have an issue with with the PlayStation 3. Uh, there, there's issues with the consoles, obviously. Not all of them are my favorite. But the PS3 had some issues. And I, I would say I don't like them. So, one of them being the controller. So, this is the same controller, for the most part, as the PS1 and the PS2. Although, you will notice that it's wireless. It does have a HDMI slot right up there, and this is a DualShock controller. Now, I know I believe that this has uh, vibration and stuff like that. This is the DualShock 3, if I'm not mistaken. But we do have analog sticks. We do have the normal face buttons. We have normal bumpers and all that stuff. But, like, let's take something, for example, like, let's compare this to, like, an Xbox 360 controller, right? The Xbox 360 controller, it took batteries, but overall was a pretty good shape, and I like the feel of this controller. But the PS3 controller, I don't really like this. I tried using it on the dashboard, like, just during the setup process. And, oh my god, this thing is horrible to set up. Like, the PS3, horrendous to set up. Like, when you have it on factory settings, if you don't know what you're doing, it's horrendous. Because, here's the things, for example, like, uh, you wouldn't hit start to, like, end up closing out, like, a message, for example. You would hit, like, the left trigger. Or, uh... Or another thing was, if you wanted to do capital letters, you had to also hit triggers instead of just pushing in the thumbstick like Xbox does. I didn't catch on to that for the longest time, so I'd be trying to capitalize stuff in my name, for example, for like PSN, and it would just be so weird looking, and it just wouldn't make any sense. Like, it'd be like, I'm hitting the button, what am I supposed to do? And plus, also, here's another thing, is that I don't know whether it's, it's just the plastic that this is made out of, or if this particular PS3 is bad, but this controller in particular, compared to the PS1 and 2, is very fragile. Like, if I do this, right, if I, like, warp the controller a lot, you'll hear a lot of unnecessary clicking that makes it sound like it's going to break. And this controller, I don't doubt, if I were to slam it on my desk, this thing would shatter. This thing is not meant to take a bang or something like that. This is very cheap plastic. Like, if, if this got hit, it'd be toast. So, the PS3 and the controller that came with it, I feel like, are very poorly laid out in terms of just, like, how they connect. Like, uh, the PS3's interface I don't like, uh, the controller I don't like, the setup for this is kind of crappy, and overall, this PS3, even though it's the slim and not the fat one, runs the game slow. Really slow. Like, painfully slow. This thing would, t this thing would struggle and it would make, like, a fan noise. You know, it sounds like it's dying, and I'm like, oh crap, did I get a bad copy? And it's just not working, man. So the PS3, 
I like the game selection on here. This is where we got to have some really good things, such as Netflix being on consoles, YouTube being on consoles, online play, like streaming. This was one of the first things that had streaming, you know? Uh, the PS2 original Xbox and the Nintendo GameCube all did have online, but the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the Nintendo Wii made online easy and kind of famous. But uh, the online play on this, eh, I don't know, I would have played about that. I'm kind of glad that I say I got the Xbox 360. I feel like that for the PS3, this is the worst PlayStation. I feel like that with Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo, they all have one really good console and one really bad console. For PlayStation, I feel like it was the 3. I feel like the 3 was the worst PlayStation just solely because of how many things they did wrong. If you ever look in the backstory, you'll know why. So now we've got the next Nintendo console down the line, right after the Super Nintendo. And this is going to be a really interesting one, because it's such a really weird and unique console. But this is the Nintendo 64, so let's take a moment and place this to the side here. So here we go, this is the Nintendo 64. This was right after the original Super Nintendo. And the thing is that this also set the precedent for a lot of stuff for gaming as well. So, with the Super Nintendo and before that, all games were 2D. That's another thing that a lot of people take for granted nowadays is 3D games. But with 3D games, you know, that was something new at the time. And one of the ways that we were finally starting to get into this for a video game generation was with full-on brand new consoles. Consoles that were dedicated to 3D. And so one of the first cracks at it was the Nintendo 64 for 360 degrees. So with the Nintendo 64... The Nintendo 64 had a lot of great things, but it also had a lot of bad things, so let's talk about them. Uh, some of the good things I like is that, since this was still before we actually had like a, some of our advanced tech that we do today, when we go back to controller ports, this was one of the consoles that had four controller ports, the very first to do it. So you could play with four friends if you ever wanted to do like split screen and stuff like that. Because, like for example, this console was the beginning of Super Smash Bros. You had the original cartridge for the first one on here, so you could play the first Smash Bros. You could play things like first person shooters like Double Eye, Golden, uh, you know, Golden Eye 007. Uh, you could play Mario Party on here. It was just overall really, really cool, and you had the normal uh, power switch, and you had the reset button. Now, this thing was interesting because it also had some other bonuses as well, such as uh, the charger back here was pretty beefy. It had, like, a pretty hefty battery to plug in. Now, under here on the bottom, this is actually for a scrapped piece of something that actually never made to America. Uh, at the uh, stage of this N64's life, we're starting to get kind of older, there was a, a add-on that was only in Japan called the N64 uh, DD, or the Nintendo 64 DD, and basically what it was was that it was a little thing that you would like shove on the bottom. So like for example, if I'm standing here, right, the Nintendo would go on that, and uh, it would actually play better games, although I don't know why my camera's going out of focus, I apologize for that. Alright, but another thing also about the Nintendo 64 as well, is if we go over to this part of it and we take off this little piece, this is going to be something that's a little bit controversial. So, some games for Nintendo 64 needed more RAM. Now, instead of having it where you just had the game be buggy or something like that, what they would do is that in this little piece, you would actually end up getting a thing called an expansion pack, which is actually this orange thing that's in here. And you would shove this in, this would give the 64 more RAM. And two games in particular needed this, which was uh, Zelda Majora's Mask and Donkey Kong 64, because... The RAM actually allowed you to be able to play these games because the console couldn't perform uh, to be able to make those games good sometimes, so you actually had to get just add-ons for it, which ended up helping it out. Because the original one that this comes from is, this is the Jumper Pack. This is the original RAM for the N64, and if you have this, this can run most games, but uh, some games would not run without the Expansion Pack. So if you ever get a Nintendo 64, you need to have this expansion pack if you want to play things. But for example, funnily enough, the one game that I actually wanted to get the N64 for need the expansion pack. It was Majora's Mask on Zelda. So that was one of the things that I had to get as an extra that I didn't know right away. And these things are rare, by the way. These cost like 50 bucks on eBay, those expansion packs. So it's a real bitch to get these. But uh, yeah, now we go on to the controller. So... Uh, here is one of the most interesting controllers I've ever seen in my life, and probably for you. This is the Nintendo 64 controller. Yeah, I, I know, I know. I'll come up with your comments right now. Like, this is a really weird-ass controller. This is probably my least favorite controller Nintendo has ever made. So let's talk about this one. 
So with the Nintendo 64 controller, what the hell is this thing? Like, why does it have three arms? Why why is it not two arms? Why is there a random middle one here for no reason? You know, like why the hell is this thumbstick so cheap? Like this thumbstick doesn't click in, it's just meant for just circular motions because this was for 3D. So like so 3D games, right? You would use the thumbstick. If you had 2D games, because there were still 2D games being made, you would use the D-pad. If you had like a shooter game or like a platformer game, you would use the face buttons. You know, and so th these are now where your uh, D-pad would sort of go, right? Here's the thing, is that, how do you hold this controller? Because you, you can hold it this way, you can hold it this way, or you can even hold it this way, which is really weird if you're uh, not a certain t a hand. Like for me, I'm kind of ambidextrous, so this really doesn't ma matter to me. But uh, it's really weird rotating between all of these, because why would you do that to somebody? You know, especially someone, like, for example, like, predominantly, you know, I happen to be ambidextrous, but I'm mostly right-handed. I do that for a lot of the stuff I do. So, holding it this way is kind of traditionally more uncomfortable than, like, this way or this way would be. I feel like a lot of people would have a hard time with this controller. If you want to play the old-school ones, you know, like, the old-school games, you would have to really get used to this controller, because it's not like the, the you know, the circle pad's over here, or the D-pad's here, and there's this is, this is the circle pad... No, you have a full-on other arm. So the, the Nintendo 64 has a dick in the middle of its controller. And and it's slinging. It's, it's a big piece of plastic in the way that you do not want. And then there's the start button. You could have memory cards and jumper packs actually go back here. And then there's even a Z button back here. Like, this is such a funky controller, man. Like, how do you use this thing? Like, it's just so weirdly laid out. And there's so many different play styles. Traditionally, it, whatever game you hold it on, that's the way it is for the whole game. So if the whole game requires you to play like this, it's like this. If the whole game requires you to play like this, it's like this. Or even if it's like this, it's like this. You don't have to usually rotate. I don't think you would. But uh, overall, this controller is very, very poorly laid out for what it was. And it could have been a lot better. And another thing that sucked about the Nintendo 64 is that this was when everyone was finally starting to do discs, and Nintendo was still using cartridges, which means that there was not a lot of third-party support, and also as well as that, just in general, there was a very short game library because of that. But overall, when a game did come out by Nintendo, it was a really good game, and it made a lot of people happy, such as Nintendo 64, Majora's Mask, stuff like that. Alrighty, so now we have another interesting console, and this is another Nintendo one. Uh, for my Nintendo Wii and my Xbox 360, those are actually in my living room because I just generally don't have enough room in my bedroom to be able to fit all my consoles. And plus, also my parents use them, for example, for like DVDs and stuff like that sometimes, so I'll show them at the end of the video. But for now, what I'll do is I'll show you my next one. So this is going to be the Nintendo GameCube, which is really weird because it looks like a lunchbox, first of all. But uh, yeah, this is one of Nintendo's most interesting consoles. So... Let's take a look at this thing, shall we? So we have power, we've got reset, and then we've also got the open. You know, it's just like a, it's literally a GameCube. It's literally a box, and you can carry it literally like a lunchbox. And there's so many extra add-ons. You got this one compartment. You got this one compartment. You've also got this one compartment. There's so many compartments on the bottom of this thing. It's ridiculous. And a lot of these were for add-ons that you can end up having. Like a lot of consoles now. You know, like, if there's an add-on or whatever, it's usually far and few in between. A lot of the time, that's usually just a digital update that they can have straight to the console. But if you need to change the console for whatever reason or add something to make it better, you couldn't just do it digitally and just send a signal. You had to actually get a separate piece of tech. So, the Nintendo GameCube just had so many slots in here just because it needed to have them for upgrades. Uh, this was one of the first that had memory cards for Nintendo because this is actually our very first console by Nintendo to actually accept discs because the N64 was a cartridge yet again and so Nintendo fell behind. This came out in 2001 I believe alongside the Xbox and this was our first discs but the thing is though is right with this one in particular is you can see there's not really much room for like a decent sized disc because with GameCube games and in fact I can actually give you an example of this I'll actually open up one of my GameCube games but we take a look at GameCube games. Let's just say, let's pull out uh, Zelda real quick. Let, let's pull out The uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. If we take a look at this disc in particular, this is going to be the disc. 
they are very, very tiny. This is not your full-on CD disc. These are tiny discs. So when you ended up putting a disc in a GameCube, they would not really have that many things in them. So I'll pop that in. I'll be very gentle with it. But yeah, here is uh, Zelda in here. And you can see it's not really that big of a disc. With Zelda, right, if I were to play this game, it would still have a lot more than a cartridge would, but not as much as, like, a full-on actual game that had, like, a full-on size disc. Nintendo finally did cave, but they didn't really do it that well. So, it really took until the Nintendo Wii for Nintendo to really finally get out of their battle habits. I mean, for example, uh, here is uh, a Nintendo, when they were still on cartridges, here's Zelda... Uh, Majora's Mask, you know, they were still deciding to do these compared to full-on discs like Sony and, and uh, Microsoft and so these things were out of date because the thing is that you could only make so many of these because they were so complicated to make compared to discs, they were harder and oh, they couldn't store as much memory either and so Nintendo was just kind of stuck in their old ways and it took them a while to finally get out of that and with Nintendo, you know, they have their hits and misses but overall, I think that the GameCube is still a lot better than the N64. You had four controller ports once again, so you could play with your buddies. And this is where you get to, like, Smash Bros. Melee, more Mario Party. Uh, you had some other really good games on here. The GameCube had actually a fantastic library of Zelda games, Mario games, even just third-party games. And you might actually recognize this because this is where the controller comes into play. This is the GameCube controller. And you guys may actually recognize this because this is modern stuff that you can use on the Wii U and also the Switch. They actually keep bringing back this controller because it's such a very well done controller. Everyone loves this thing. In fact, I actually start to like this thing myself now too as well. So this is the GameCube controller. And in my humble opinion, this is a vastly better controller than the N64 controller. It's a lot more comfortable. So we've got triggers on the back here one bumper in particular we've only got one bumper on the side here this does not have a bu bumper over here but there's one here uh we've got dual thumbsticks the left one is gray and bigger than the yellow one on the bottom the yellow one on the bottom kind of sucks uh d-pad down here and we've got y x a and b and they're kind of like weirdly laid out here but i kind of like it it looks like bumpers again and then we've also got start and pause and I love the triggers on this thing. They, they're they they're nice and round, uh, but they have like kind of like a wall on the side so your fingers don't slide off because they're kind of like concaved. And they also got this nice squishy like plasticky sound like... It's so, it's so satisfying to use the triggers on the GameCube. The GameCube triggers are like ASMR. It's, it's ridiculous. They're just so nice and clicky and I love them. And overall... The way that it's shaped is actually surprisingly very comfortable. You would think looking at this controller that'd be uncomfortable as hell, but no, this is this is very comfortable to use. I actually really end up enjoying the GameCube controller, and if you don't believe me, you can still get these today. Just get it for your Switch and just tell me what you think about it. I think you'll get a big kick out of the GameCube controller. I got the purple one as uh, you know what I got. Hey guys, editing John here, and this is a little video that I decided to take in my living room earlier. This is actually all my Xbox 360 games that I do not have in my bedroom, plus also my Xbox 360 and my Wii in general were also in, in the living room, so I was also able to show those off. I had the original white Wii as a kid, it was my very first video game console, and then my second video game console ever was the Xbox 360, or the Xbox 360E, which is the black one. And I also have my controller, I even had a glow-in-the-dark plug-in controller which glows blue, which is actually pretty sick. It's one of my few consoles that I really do enjoy, the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii, I know I know that's easy to say that they're the best because they're my first, along, as I'm showing my broken Xbox 360 headset help with duct tape. But overall, in general, I just love those things, man. They're such a great console. Alright, now here's actually a bonus clip, by the way, because I actually forgot to show these things off. Because it was a mixture of, like, I didn't think they were necessarily important, Plus also, in general, these are t traditionally my not favorite consoles. Plus also, they're just not really good consoles in general, except for a few. So here is also my Wii U, my Xbox One, and my PS4. The PS4 is not a bad console. It's just that it got included in this because it was under my bed and I just had no room and I forgot about it. But let's take a look at the Wii U and the Xbox One because I don't really particularly like these consoles. They're not the best. So here is the Wii U. It's actually it's full on own console. It's not a Wii U add-on. It's a full on console. It's this little tube thing right here, 
And you would you would put the games in here. It's kind of a little bit ugly looking uh, from the front. It doesn't look that cosmetically appealing. And uh, the controller was kind of one of the things that did it for a lot of people. This is the controller. It was actually a it was a computer pad almost, or like a tablet. So you would have games and stuff like that broadcast on here. You could sometimes play on it like a DS. But the main thing was supposed to be on the screen, so you would have to look up and down repeatedly. Now, even though this controller is actually kind of comfortable the way it's held, you know, with, like, the grooves being back here and the nice triggers and the, you know, the, uh, the circle pads, overall, this controller, unfortunately, is too big, and I kind of feel like you have to rest it on your lap. And the rotating between looking up and down is kind of annoying. And also, because of the fact that there's a screen on here, which you can't turn off, by the way, and you have to use on a lot of games... You have to rely on this unless you're using a Pro Controller or a Wii U Pro Controller. And sometimes you still need this regardless for certain games. And also this dies a lot. You can only get a couple hours before this dies and you don't have a controller now for your Wii U. So unless you plug it in all the time, which you can't plug in the Wii U by the way, it has to go into its own thing in a power socket. This thing is just really inconvenient. So overall I really don't like the Wii U. I think that the Wii U is the worst console that Nintendo has ever made. And I think it's actually pretty crappy. And then we've also got the Xbox One. Now, the Xbox One, even though I just recently only got rid of this thing for the Series X, I, I would have to say that this is the worst Xbox. I would, I would say this, is that the PS3, the Wii U, and the original Xbox One, these three consoles in particular are the worst of all three of those genres, the worst respectively, worst Microsoft console, worst Nintendo console, and worst Sony console. Whereas I think the best, funnily enough, I think is actually the PS4, the Xbox 360, and then I would probably say for Nintendo, probably the Switch. Now, the thing is, though, is that the Switch and the PS4 and the Xbox 360 all have different things that make them good, and the reason why I didn't put the the PS5 or the Xbox Series X and this, even though I made a video about them recently, even though I do think they're good consoles, and I think the best consoles, they're still too new, and I wouldn't put them on this list, if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm still kind of, uh, you know, unsure about what the coming years will be, but I think they'll be good. And uh, even though the Nintendo Switch is its current console, and that still has a lot of years to go, the Nintendo Switch is almost going to be done soon. We'll have the next Nintendo console. So I think for the most part, it's done. That's why I say that. And then we also have the PS4. Do not break this. And then we also have the PS4. I got the PS4 Slim, and honestly, for what I had uh, with the PS4 here, because I got the PS5 three months later, this was honestly cool the last four months that I had it. It was one of the last few PlayStation 4s they actually had in, in retail stores before they started having nothing. Uh, you know, the PS4, man, it's, it's a really great step up from the PS3, I will say that. And uh, collecting PlayStations, all five of them over the last several months have been a lot of fun. Now I understand the Sony craze. But uh, the PS4, other than the PS2, is one of the best PlayStations. I really like this thing. And look at that. For the first time in uh, several years, Sony actually made a new controller. Uh. Alrighty, so now as we're wrapping things up, because this is actually about to be an hour long, I, I was telling you guys this video could go on for ages. But also another thing with my consoles as well is that, like I said, my Wii and my Xbox 360 are in my living room. But we all know what the Xbox 360 and the Wii most likely, you know, look like because we've all had them for so long. I have the traditional white Wii, and I actually have the Xbox 360 Slim, which is the black one, not the white one. That actually had internet connection and less problems and less, like, red ring of death, for example. But if you also do want to see my modern stuff, it's also over here, too, as well. I can move the webcam and just, like, just show it down here. So, down here, over here on my desk, I've got my PS5, my Xbox Series X, my Nintendo Switch... And I'm also just, in general, using my PC. And I have several games, of course, on these. But as we get into the more modern stuff, you know, we have things such as, like, direct download. And we don't have necessarily discs anymore. Or we don't even have really cartridges anymore. So, for the longest time, uh, you know, I've collected all these stuff. And they're all physical. But most of the time, a lot of stuff is going digital nowadays. So, really, all of this is about the actual console. But we do have some other cool knickknacks that I wanted to show you guys still. Like, for example, I want to show off my scuff controller again, for those who have not seen it. This is my X. Xbox One scuff controller. This is something that's completely custom. Uh, this is actually a nice, cool camo blue. It actually has control freaks on it, too, which also match. These are Modern Warfare control freaks. I have the mic uh, adaptation piece in the bottom. I've got paddles. This was before the Xbox controllers came with paddles with all these elite controllers. They basically copied scuff or took inspiration from scuff. And, uh, you know, this has a lot of cool features about it. The uh, thumbsticks actually do come off. These are actually customizable thumbsticks, which I really do love, and I think these are actually super sick. 
Uh, spongy kind of grips on the back. They're very contextual, and I like that a lot. Uh, trigger stops, so that way, kind of like similar to how the PS5 actually ends up having uh, like the really sensitive triggers, where if you actually pull down the trigger, it actually like shoots ahead of time. Like you can go about like halfway there, it's already shooting. With the Xbox One controller, because this is an Xbox One scuff control that can bring over to the Series X, this one has the same thing. You pull down these switches that are in between, like, the paddles back here, like, where the green part is, and the triggers get stopped halfway through. So if I were to flick one, for example, let me turn one of my uh, trigger stops off, actually. Just really, really quickly, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, right about there. So, this is the original trigger, and then this is with a trigger stop. You can see the ever so slight difference how that the trigger stop makes the trigger go up a little bit because it doesn't let it go down all the way because you don't need to go down all the way to be able to send that input to the controller to cause the action. Other than a few exceptions, I can't get to work on some games such as GTA 5 Online. I think that it thinks I'm hacking because every single time I play GTA 5 Online with this controller, I have to turn off the trigger stops. Otherwise, I can't shoot. I don't know why it does that. Rockstar, if you could like tell me, that'd be wonderful because I don't know why it just won't work with this controller. It genuinely is not the worst thing in the world, but I overall like my scuff and I want to keep using it in everything I use, so that would always be a big plus. And I'll put it back on my controller stand, which is just Master Chief holding my controller, which I think is like the sickest thing. And then overall, also over here, I just got all my games. So what I will do is I will open up the dresser drawer and I will show you guys some of my other games that I have in here. So this is my dresser drawer. I have got all my Xbox 360 games for the most part in here. The ones that are at least backwards compatible. Not every single one is in here. Most of the other ones are in my living room, but I've got Xbox 360. I have got Xbox One. I got one single original Nintendo cartridge in here. I've got a Nintendo 64 cartridge alongside some others. SNES cartridges, uh, PlayStation 1 and 2 games. Uh, Nintendo 3DS games, GameCube games, PS3 games, etc, etc, etc. The list just keeps going on and on and on. And also as well in here, uh, at the same time, I never owned anything like a original Atari console or a uh, Sega console, because those are also some other companies that did the video game console for a while. But I actually do have a plug-and-play Atari uh, device. I actually got the Atari uh, Paddle, which is actually a plug-and-play Atari uh, uh, toy that you can have. This was made by, I think, Namco, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, basically, uh, Atari gave permission to the company to recreate their games on a plug-and-play device. So instead of having an Atari console and plugging in cartridges and having to do wires and all that stuff, the controller is the console, and you just plug it into the TV, and all the games are preloaded on the controller, and you play things such as like Pong, for example. And Atari did approve this. This isn't something that's just a cheap ripoff. So if you genuinely want to have a more modern version of some of the uh you know the atari stuff if you really want to go that far back because it's older than the nintendo if you want to play something like such as pong you would get something like that rather than the original Atari like 2600 because then you would have to also get the pong cartridge and it would just be kind of like a waste i mean sure you could play more atari games if you got the full-on system but atari games i feel like are a little too old nintendo games are a little bit different nintendo games i feel like are modern enough but when you get into like the 70s with like Atari, you're starting to get into some water territory because pretty much for the most part, the games were so new at the time that you get things pretty much like Pong, you know what I mean? Not really much color, not really much things to do. At least with Nintendo games, this is where we start to get to like Mario, you know, or Zelda, you know, something like that. So I think that that's honestly good enough for me. If I ever wanted to get a Sega system, I would probably get the Genesis because Sega also kind of suffers from having kind of like uh, older games. The Sega kind of was more around uh, uh, Nintendo's time. The last console they made was the Dreamcast, which came out in 2001 with the Xbox. But, uh, you know, they were around for the longest time. They had the Master System, which was around, like, before Nintendo really even got big. It was, like, around the uh, Nintendo or the uh, Super Nintendo era. And the, the Genesis was out during the Super Nintendo era. That's, like, the most infamous one. Uh, the Genesis, I would say, is probably the best Sega console other than the Dreamcast. So if I ever did get a Sega device, it would probably be that eventually. But they've also even remated uh, the the Sega uh, Genesis. They actually have a plug-and-play version of that too, which also has preloaded games. Although I feel like with the Sega stuff, I would at least get the Sega console. Because the fact is that Sega, their preloaded games on their emulated one are not really that good. You really only have just like Sonic and then some other third-party stuff. But 
you can get things on the Genesis such as Mortal Kombat, uh, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, you also got some other stuff on like the Dreamcast where they finally had discs, and you can name some more modern games like Street Fighter and stuff like that. A lot of it's more fighting games, but fun stuff indeed. But yeah, guys, this is pretty much going to be it for today's video. I truly hope you ended up enjoying. If you did, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. But let me know what you thought about my gaming collection. Like, this is just like a tidbit of what is to come for videos I could make about stuff. I can make a video on pretty much like any of these things. And let me know what you think of them in the comment section down below. I hope you guys end up enjoying today's video. Let me know what you guys have in your gaming collection as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed another YouTube video from the most unique YouTuber you are ever going to see. Peace out, guys.